He's back at the next hush of the silver, mate. You've been the prodigal son, but you found the light. You've come back to Bill Aubrey, mate. Welcome back. Yeah, mate, it's good to be back uh, at Wynnum and thoroughly enjoyed my work uh, since I started with the lower grades and some of the junior teams. All right, yeah, cricket's in full swing. Um, the lower grades don't start for a few weeks. How are you going with uh, pre-season? They, uh, are they doing the beep tests and uh, the, the, uh, the runs around the, <laughs> the city? What's happening with those guys? Yeah, like we, we had a few uh, fitness sessions for them uh, as well as for the top grades. But uh, we've been playing a, playing a few trial matches as well, including a couple of games happening this weekend uh, down at South. So the preparation has been pretty good for those boys. And a big thanks to uh, the club hierarchy for organising all these games for their lower grades. Fifth grade of Premiership last year. Sixth grade was supposed to play in a grand final. First grade stumbled. And uh, unfortunately, three, two, three and four, fourth grade struggled a bit to hush. What have we done to address that uh, from last year? Well, uh, John, as, as you know, I sort of uh, was overseas and I'm, yeah. I just joined the club uh, maybe about uh, six to eight weeks back. So uh, I, I can't sort of comment on what, what, what happened last year. But what I, what I can assure is that uh, we've got a few a very young, young set of boys. Uh, like I think we were the champs in the tab last year. So we got a lot of, lot of boys from the tab team playing low grades this year, including a couple of them in the top grades as well. So we've got a lot of young talent. And, and also, it's always good to have uh, the senior boys sort of uh, rubbing shoulders against the youngsters, sharing their knowledge. And it, 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 it's a pretty good mix. And um, I'm look like, I'm hopeful of uh, big things with the lower grades this year. Yeah, it's probably a good thing, actually, Harsh, you come in that you haven't got uh, the, the, the skeletons or the ghosts in the cupboard from what's happened the last couple of years. You can start fresh, which is a, which is, is a good thing, of course. So uh, hopefully, yeah, the, the Lord Tavernus players, you've got the Hatherals, you've got uh, Gossett, uh, Plum, all these guys who've played uh, quality cricket coming in, and, and you're right, the blend of youth and, and uh, experience in there as well. Um, now, the reason I'm talking to you, mate, is because there's a bit of an initiative. We're trying to get some cricket gear together to send over to, uh, to Sri Lanka. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, John, so that's something that I actually had in my mind for some time. But I was ha having a chat with my current employee, uh, Neil, uh, earlier early last week. And we were talking how, how we can sort of uh, help some of the underprivileged kids back in Sri Lanka because I've, I've experienced firsthand how hard it is for parents to get uh, gear for kids and especially in the rural areas. Uh, and, and with this COVID affecting everyone, uh, I thought or we thought like it would be a good good time to, I know a lot of the kids in Australia, uh, it's the time of the year that they uh, purchase new goods and uh, sort of upgrade their old, old ones. Mm. And I, I know for a fact there are a lot of lot of kids who are sort of uh, giving away stuff or throwing throwing cricket gear, which could be used. And we thought it would be a good good time, a good idea, to try and collect collect a few of them and send them over. Well, it's because of COVID, everybody's been at home. They've been throwing out garbage in the garages because they had a you know, spring clean all year. But you're right; there are a lot of cricket gear there that you know kids grow out of shoes. Kids prefer new makers or pads I got a little buckle missing or something, they're a bit precious, you know, batsmen are like Harsha. Not us bowls, we don't care. Um, yeah, there's a lot of gear that's just sitting there and it's going to go to the dump. And, and I think the, the kids just rank it really good because they love cricket. They, they're even crazier about it than we are. Uh, we, we are a cricket-loving, uh, crazy, crazy <laughs> uh, country. So, as you said, uh, um, I've, I've experienced a lot of kids like even growing up back, back in Sri Lanka, I know uh, a lot of us didn't have uh, good cricket gear to start off with and we always sort of rely on hand downs and uh, sort of borrowing uh, stuff from other, others to, in the team yeah. to share among us. So it's, it's always good. And as I said, like this COVID is going to hit all of us pretty bad uh, in due time. And uh, anything that, that we can support the community uh, uh, if you can sort of get together and uh, give them a hand, I think not 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 in not only in Sri Lanka, but I think anywhere in the world. I know there are a lot of uh, clubs and communities sort of uh, collecting stuff for other other islands like Fiji and stuff like that. So, which is a good thing. Mm. All right, now how do we get gear to? If you got the gear, where do we take it, mate? Uh, take down the, the the club, or what's the plan? 
Uh, yes, so the plan is to sort of, uh, the club has sort of, the, junior, ju the juniors have been pretty, pretty kind and uh, has told me that I can use their uh, storage uh, container uh, for the time being. And we also had uh, Councillor Lisa Atwood mm. uh, at the next la last night. So she came and pledged her support as well. So she was kind of say that uh, her centre can be used as one of the collect collecting oh. points. Mm. So if anyone is interested in donating, they can either bring it to the club or uh, drop it over at Lisa's office in Cannon Hill. Okay, well, good old Lisa. That would actually, uh, probably should talk her into playing cricket, I reckon. She'd probably be, uh, <laughs> might, might be too bad with the bat to see, see how she goes. Harsh, uh, mate, it's, it's a long summer ahead. We've had a terrible off-season, obviously, because of COVID and all that sort of stuff. Just quickly, mate, how's, how's your family at home? How are they coping? They're all uh, uh, you know, doing the best they can? Yes, man. Like, um, like my family, uh, wife and kids, kids are in Brisbane, but I yeah. got two sisters in uh, in back in Sri Lanka. So, uh, like, it's it's a bit hard. Like, it's not been uh, this long that we've been away from each other. We at least try and sort of uh, meet either here or back in Sri Lanka for uh, every three months or six months. But everyone's keeping well and. Uh, uh, hats off to the, the the authorities in Sri Lanka. They seem to have get, got it under control. Mm -hmm. I think the numbers are very low. I don't think there have been any more than 20, 20 deaths and uh, the cases are pretty low as well. So they, ha they had like a three month uh, uh, complete lockdown which seems to have helped them. Yeah. So hats off to them. And I think, uh, like believe it or not, the, the, the population in Sri Lanka and Australia are the same, 23 million. And they, they actually have got it under control. And I think the fact that it's a small island sort of helped helped us by yeah. not allowing anyone in as well. Mm, yeah, no, well, that's, that's, that's an amazing set. Well done to them. But yeah, look, I, I yeah, I, I'd imagine it's probably the blessing in disguise for your sisters is you going over there and freeloading, eating all their food and drinking all their beer and uh, <laughs> stealing all, these, all, their, all their goodies and probably going, this is great. Stay where you are. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like one of, one of us missed our 50th birthday as well. I got, a, I got two sisters in Melbourne, so they're, they're all right. And so one of them had their 50th a couple of weeks back, so we couldn't sort of celebrate that as well because the plan was uh, the, the twin uh, Sri Lanka to fly to Melbourne and for us to go there as well, but didn't happen. But hopefully we'll have a, a quick catch up pretty soon. Most well, certainly, yeah. If, uh, we'll save you buying a present, mate. That's what you're after. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. So, well, uh, we'll put up the, uh, where they can drop all that stuff off there and, and see how they go. The, uh, the lower grade start, I think, um, in October. In two sorry. weeks. Yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah, in two, in two weeks. Yeah. yeah. So not this weekend, the week, weekend after. Middle of the school holidays. Yeah. Okay. Harsha, thanks for your time, mate. Always good to see you. It'll be lovely to see you around the traps uh, again. And uh, you, you, I'm, uh, I'm over the Gap Way over here at the Gap near Valleys. And um, they're, they're in mourning over here, mate. They're absolutely shattered. They can't believe, you know, Harsh is not part of their system over here anymore. And they're, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's signs up. Uh, yeah, uh, Kate Jones, I think that's why she's retiring from Parliament because you're no longer part of the community, mate. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Harsh, all the best, mate. Thanks, John. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the support.